Good morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Garvey here, your host on Reviver Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering natural health on this your th Wednesday morning, rise and shine and give God the glory. And this morning here, we're looking at the um, topic, vaping problems and innocent deception. So life's innocent deceptions. So I wanted to look at this this morning here with you and use this vaping issue as a vehicle to cover innocent deceptions how we can be so duped by innocence or things that we can't see well welcome again hopefully the blessed night rest you're ready to take on today thanks for dropping by let us pray our oh, father what in heaven i thank you for your love for your wisdom for the guidance that you give us to be able to um sidestep so to speak many of the evils that are in this life and to live and not die may you bless us we pray for christ's sake amen so welcome again. Thanks for joining me here. And uh, we got to have some articles I want to share about just kind of update about the issues with vaping. But more so I want to talk about this issue of um, life's innocent deceptions. So life's innocent deceptions. Our deceptions and problems that we face in life can be so innocent and cute. And um, uh, we don't see the danger of what we're doing. And that's how it started. And that's how it continues. There's this thing that seemed like, oh, it's so innocent. It's so cute. And it is monstrous. And that's the problem with life. And so there's so much things that we deal with in life that we don't take it serious. And so that's why I love the Bible. Because what the Bible does, it gives you insight and it gives you this narrative that this is part of what life and the moment you start seeing that then you'll be careful of a lot of things what you put in your mouth where you go things like that because it might seem innocent it might seem like you're going on a vacation somewhere and it seemed like it's a paradise but you know just two blocks up the road from paradise it's a war zone and you never know probably the was war zone spill over into where you're at and probably you go too close you go one block up the road you just came a little bit too close and things are going to spill over in your direction. And that's how life is. So one has to always be aware that evil is lurking and that there's things that might sell itself as it's going to be so great and it's going to be all right and we're going to have a good time. But the end product is death. And so this is to me one of the major narratives of the Bible. The Bible teaches that and Somebody might say, well, what do you get from the Bible? I oh, get that death is always lurking by. There's always a deception. That's one of the main things I get, and I need to escape it. The Lord needs to deliver me, and I need to make every effort to get going. So we start off by reading Isaiah chapter 28, verse 7 through 10. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 7 through 10. And this is more famous amongst us for verse 9 and 10. But well, I'm read eight, seven, and eight for you, just to put it in context. Notice here the two contrasts in lifestyle. Notice in verse seven it says, "But they have erred through wine, and through strong drink, are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have heard through strong drink. They have swallowed up. Um, they are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment." For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Then now, we normally quote this text in isolation, but notice the opposite now. Whom shall I teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from, from the milk and drawn from the breast. Precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line line upon line, here a little, and there a little. So this is the principle in verse 10 that we normally use as how to study the Bible. We study the Bible. The Bible has to be approached in a metallical way, like you would be doing any type of scientific research. And you approach the Bible like that. It's a metallical book. You cannot approach it in an opposite way. It's a very, you have to approach it in a reverential, prayerful, and very methodical way. And so in verse 10, it simply says, Precept up on, on precept. So you take an idea and you add another idea to it, or a teaching, add another teaching, add another teaching, and then you come to a better conclusion. Precept upon precept, line upon line. So you take a line and you go somewhere, as you see another line, and you're like, okay, and then you add two, three, four, five more, 10, 20, 100 lines, 
and you get a very broad three-dimensional picture of what is being said because we believe the same inspiration brought about the Bible which is the Holy Spirit various different men from different experience different um, life skills different all kind of stuff and but they all get inspired and they all communicate slightly different sometimes very different but yet it is the same spirit line upon line here a little there a little so notice there there's this methodical way so these are God's true men but they're men who have erred and they're erred and they're not gonna be able to do methodical now when you think about that if you're drunk or you're high on drugs which is just alcohol is liquid drugs so when we approach the Bible and mention alcohol you could put in place any powder drug any you know liquid drug that is not um, like alcohol as another class of drugs and you're gonna get the same result you're not gonna be able to be methodical you're gonna be all over the place because you're drunk and you're not gonna be able to be clean both spiritually morally physically anyway because you're under the influence so I'm gonna go back and read this for you here as uh, before I read my first article and I'm gonna come back to this and my topic again is vaping problems and life's innocent deceptions or innocent deceptions notice here again but they that they have also but they also have heard through wine so the error is coming from the alcohol itself which you want to think about is somebody's trying to teach truth somebody's trying to get to the bottom of whatever and they are drunk or they're high uh, the whole process of drugs whether it be as i say liquid or powder it is that it 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 readjusts your thinking it affects your mind it makes you see things the way they're not that's the whole idea somebody take it so that they can feel what they're not personally they can be something that they're not the problem is it can make you be an angry person if you're not even angry so they have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way so they're out of the way they can't be methodical in their research or bible study the priests so just in case you're thinking oh this is the common people so in the time of Isaiah, you can just imagine you're trying to preach the truth and really what's going on is you have all the drunks in the priesthood leading the people astray because they have gone they're they're not about ministry they're about drunkenness the priests and the prophets have erred through strong drink they are swallowed up of wine they are out of the way through strong drink they err in vision they stumble in judgment so you listen to the person thinking, what are they talking about? And you're like, oh, they're drunk. Oh, they're high. They're out of the way and they're preaching. And from their sermons, like I covered yesterday and I was saying that um, when I thought about drugs and alcohol, I was more thinking that it would be used as part of worship. But when you get into the Bible, you start to, as the Bible has to be studied, line up and line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. What you start to realize is that it is not just the idea of using it as a sacrament, but it's this deeper idea that the minds are gone because of the drug use and the alcohol use. And they're drunks literally. And so you have somebody preaching to you, you're thinking, man, what is he talking about? I can't even follow him in the Bible. And then you're like, oh, he drunk. He's not just drunk with spiritual false teaching. The false teaching that's coming out of his mouth is because the alcohol is making him err. He can't judge properly if a scenario happened in front of him because he's literally drunk. And this is what happened. Notice here, this is supposed to be men of God. Notice in verse 8, For all tables are full of vomiting or vomit and filthiness, so that they are, there is no place clean. Imagine, this is what's going on. You, you hear these stories about how men in the priesthood ministers are doing orgies and gay orgies and they're doing all kind of drug use and you would be like what is going on and you realize it's just what the bible always said you know human nature is always the same you know people because they have a cell phone or they have a computer they think we're in modern times there's never such a thing there's just always times 
And as human beings do the same thing. It's either sexual gratification, homosexuality, effeminate behavior, drunkenness, alcohol. It's just, you know, this is human beings. It's the same body we have. The body just even more in pain than it was 2,000 years ago. That's all it is. So we are more susceptible to want to take something to take away the pain, whether it be mental or physical. And so the person who's supposed to be leading you down the path of righteousness is a drunk. He's being influenced by alcohol. So he can't do line up a line. And he says, whom shall I teach knowledge and whom shall I make to understand doctrine? And they that are weaned from the milk, that means they're not like babes and drawn from the breast. They're a little bit more mature. And so if you're mature, you're going to live a little bit mature. So this is important. Very important. Uh, can't, unlike, you know, whatever. I can't over-exaggerate this or under-exaggerate it. So I have three articles I'm going to try to quickly get through here. And I want to come back to this discussion here of the innocent, this innocent deceptions. Or what I call life's innocence deception. You know, there's the deceptions that we deal with or things that we have to deal with that you really can't see. But they're dangerous, like bacteria and viruses, like the potency of a beautiful alcoholic beverages that look so beautiful, look so refreshing, and yet they're dangerous drugs. The end result is just brokenness. Same thing with these white white powders and these crystalline powders, clear as water, but powerful chemicals that will derange you and mess up your life. And make you become a fiend, a, an addict, a violent person. You just look at them and like, oh, look how cute and nice this little crystal powder is. It's like salt. So this is the, the story of life. So notice here, three quick articles here. Illinois uh, residents suffer a breathing issue after vaping dies. So last week, now Friday, I guess the first person kicked the bucket an Illinois resident who was recently hospitalized with severe respiratory issues after vaping has died. The death comes as report of illness from vaping are growing around the country. With the Center for Disease Control and Prevention announcing Friday that more than 193 possible cases of severe lung illness from vaping products in 22 states are on investigation. All of the cases are, were identified between June 20th and August 20. We find ourselves in the early stage of these investigations trying to piece together the facts. Many of these cases have involved the presence of compounds like THC. The Director for Food and Drug Administration Center for Tobacco Products said during a call with reporters, at this, at times, we are relying on case reporting that is incomplete and inquire and requires time to gather basic information like the name of the product that was was used where it was purchased and then how the products product was used illinois public health officials declined to give any information about the person who died other than that the person was an adult 22 cases have been confirmed in that state and an additional 12 under investigation. The patient range um, ranges in age from 17 to 38. And the majority of the case has been men, most naturally, because the Lord is just, um, the, the Lord, but it, it keep happening where the men getting wiped out because the, the men are so involved in this. And I always think it's interesting that the Lord um, targets, so to speak, most of the Bible towards men. He speaks to men. And people say, oh, no, that's... Uh, what is it? Um, male patriarchy. But man, the guys are just popping themselves off. Sad. Uh, many patients have complained of symptoms including shortness of breath, fatigue, cough. Others um, have reported vomiting and diarrhea. According to the Illinois Health Department, symptoms usually worsen before the person went to the hospital. In Colorado, the state health department confirmed that at least one person have a severe lung illness linking to vaping. According to the Denver Post, that is the first confirmed case in the state. In Minnesota, the, the chief medical officer for children, Minnesota, a pediatric health system, previously told NBC News 
that four teenagers were hospitalized with what doctors initially believed was a bad respiratory infection like pneumonia, but symptoms worsened. The medical officers said the patients were having lung issues and some needed assistant, assistance, assistance, assistance with their breathing. The Minnesota Department of Health said in a press release Thursday that the state has 15 possible cases of severe lung illnesses related to vaping. Not all of the cases have been confirmed and some remain under investigation. In Wisconsin, 26-year-old man started to feel ill and was hospitalized after taking a couple of hits um, from a vaping cartridge uh, and is eventually was put on medical induced coma and then later released. He has since been released. His brother, Patrick Grave, um, Nelson purchased the cartridge off the street and not from a reputable shop. You don't know if you're buying something from a millman that picked it up from a dispensary or if it's be buying it from somebody who has tampered with it and made their own mixture. You literally don't know what you're inhaling into your body, literally. So I wanted to point out here that there was an article, not an article, that I didn't share here. I'm not going to share, but I just mentioned it. That it was saying that uh, that's the end of the article, and it was saying in that article, other article that you could um, it could cause ruptured, uh, I guess, blood vessel on first use. So this could be a first, some of these people could literally be first time users, and it could um, it could damage you. So this is. Vaping. So literally like the guy says in the end right there. He says that you literally don't know what you're putting inside of your body. And I think that just not just the, 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 the some of the ingredients to make it work or to make it happen, but it is the THC itself and other things. I'm gonna read something later on about them in a few minutes. So it is the THC, but it is think about it, you deal with somebody that's sending you a drugs to make money off you. And if it, that person could tamper it to put even, say, fentanyl or something else in it, whatever, to water it down, to make more money, to put other drugs in there to make you become addicted to their brand, or their formula, anything is possible. We deal with human beings who are doing something for um, the the main, one of the main sins in this world, which is our motivation for sin, which is the love of money, greed. The love of money is the root of all evil. So you see that you like, yeah, a person could do whatever. Water it down with some dangerous chemical. Notice this is going on with vaping, but it's also going on with alcohol in Dominican Republic and in Costa Rica. Because a person can sell some water down the alcohol. Well, the alcohol down the alcohol, because they're using alcohol that is dangerous to the body. Uh, but it will give you still a high. And that's what they're doing. So fascinating stuff uh, when you see what's going on here. So this is what happened in vaping. So notice here, my topic again, I'll just say this to you, is vaping problems and innocent deceptions. Because it looks so nice. It can't do any harm. And the person is doing it to feel good, to feel a high, to feel a buzz, to have a superb experience. Next article here. Um, I'm not going to read this full article, but I'm going to grab some points from it for you. So, uh, this is again in NBCnews.com, uh, written by Victoria Knight and, uh, from Kaiser Health. And it's years ago, this doctor linked a mysterious lung disease to vaping. And so, this happened in West Virginia and it happened in 2015. So, Dr. Johnny Parker was working at West Virginia Hospital in 2015 when a 31-year-old female patient admitted with acute admitted with acute respiratory problems a team doctor a team of doctors are ultimately suspected that a mysterious case of uh, lipoid pneumonia might be related to vaping and weren't sure they had seen anything like it before they were intrigued enough to put a case report a type of medical paper on unusual or provocative patients patient findings. Such report can serve as a call to the medical community to be on the lookout, though they sometimes raise more questions than they provide answers. This summer, almost four years later, 
Federal officials began investigating a national outbreak of severe lung illnesses linked to vaping that has struck more than 150 patients, so we're, you know, we're up to uh, almost 200. In 16 states, we're up to 22 states. So basically, I'm going to tell you the rundown of this without going through all this reading uh, for you here. So what the doctor here, I think it was his name again, Dr. Parker. What Dr. Parker and his team found was that this person, they um, linked it to the vaping pen or the vaping itself. I don't know if it's a pen they were using. And they linked it to the vaping and they said this has something to do with the vaping. So that's four years. So imagine and basically from the interview that the person who wrote the article interviewed the doctor. He believes that this is uh, it's been going on before them because he was saying towards the end of the article that there was there there this happening is they've been Japan has been interested in this and they've been writing various different papers. There were other papers in different parts of this country written before they put out their papers. So he believes he's not the first person to find it per se, but. It has been something that's been seen and he believed that there's many cases that comes in because when a person came in, this young lady came in, he not, he, they gave her um, steroid and then some antibiotics and then, you know, the, a small dose of antibiotics to calm the lungs down. And then, you know, other things, nutrition, I think it's something else they offered to her to calm it down. And so the person... Um, you know, recovered, and then they, they wrote the paper and they move on. So that's important to note that this outbreak has been, as he says in the article, that it is been something that is there. It it is just not been widespread, and it's been something that has been associated, and it's been four. He also says four different type of pneumonia that could seem to be pneumonia, but is really. Um, not pneumonia because the person coming in having a respiratory problem but no viral or bacterial infection. So then they start to look into it and say, wait a minute, there's no viral and bacterial infection. Why is the person going through this type of thing? So he says he's not the first to, to do it, uh, to find it, and he doesn't know exactly what's causing it. They think it could be an, uh, uh, you know, some type of injury. Uh, that's happening to the lungs because of either the chemical in it or something. Um, and he says, in general, lungs don't like oil, which is very important to note. And I'll read this part here. He says, I think it could be any other, any, any number of components in the mixture. Lungs don't like oil in general. And probably most specific agent that been studied recently is diacetyl, which was studied in popcorn flavor in lung disease. So I remember years back, uh, there were these these guys that work at the company that make popcorn. And the, the, the one of the things in the popcorn, if you know the fake popcorn, I shouldn't say fake, but the fake butter flavor. So you know, when you, you, you pop a popcorn in the microwave or something like that, that comes in those bags, you get that butter, fake butter flavor. But that butter flavor is dangerous to the lungs. And I think the, well, the active ingredient is diacetyl, uh, which basically the men that were working in the factory were never given proper protection. And a lot of them came down with lung cancer. And so they had sued and won their case. That they, they I think the company covered the information that that fake scent and flavoring is dangerous to the lungs. So that is one of these things. So that's proven that you can have a chemical that basically um, might seem innocuous, seem innocent, but it'll damage the lungs. So this this is happening. So you know, and you can smell. You could be in a room and person has pop one of those bags of popcorn, and it's amazing how that scent fills the room. You think you're just like walking in butter flavor, butter air, but it is a dangerous chemical. Anyhow, so basically, towards the end of the article, he says um, there um, an in an inhalation injury may cause an acute lung injury that's life threatening, and that some may survive from and have no long term 
um, condition. But there are there also is the possibility that long term e cigarette use may cause more insidious and chronic disease from which there may not be full recovery. So, you know, uh, think about other people using so cigarette and having all kind of lung problems. And now you have something that could long term use could cause um, long term damage. That's important to note. So that's why I want to put this out there. This is very important information to put out there. This thing here seems, oh, look at that. The person is going to feel a buzz. They're going to take away the nervous tick and just relax them. And basically, this thing can put you to sleep. And so we can officially say now that vaping can put you to sleep. And because at least there's one confirmed person that it put permanently to sleep. Another thing I wanted to say, I've always wondered though about the vaping, not so much the content. And I just put this out as a thought. It might be nothing to it. But not so much the content of in what's in the vaping mixture itself. But the vaping in itself. I've even seen somebody vaping. It is amazing the amount of um, stuff coming out of their mouth. Um, because I guess if you're used to seeing somebody smoking weed or smoking tobacco or, or a cigar, you know, you, you there's a certain level of smoke that come out. The level of smoke that come out of a vaping pen is amazing. When a person, I've seen people take a hit of that thing while driving and when they, <laughs> when they blow through the window of their car, Car, your car is driving at whatever miles per hour, and the amount of smoke that comes out, I'm thinking, that can't come out of one person. That's amazing. So, so I often wonder, could that damage the lungs? Now, as I say, uh, the more they look into this, the more they find, wait a minute, this is not some unique problem. This is something that's been ongoing. So this is, but it, it gives me thinking because I say I've always seen it and I always be like amazed that, you know, you see somebody have that cartridge in their hand and they hit it. And when what comes out of their mouth, you'll be like, man, it's just like they hit about four cigarettes at one point. So they have four cigarettes smoking and they pull on it and they puff out. You'll be like, wow, that has to have so much pressure on the lungs, um, pressure physically, but also just. Because I don't know what it's doing. If you have any information, I'd like to see it. Why does it produce so much smoke? I'm going to look it up. Not right now. <laughs> so I move on. But um, that I just throw that out there. You know, as I said, just throw it out there. Um, because they're going to investigate and they might find exactly that it could be acetyl. Or it could be something else. Specifically could be. could be what I'm going to read next. Which is about... Um, using concentrated marijuana, um, but it could be the, the the concentrate of the tobacco, the nicotine, or the concentrate of the THC that's doing the damage. It could be a combination. It could be because if it could cause burst blood vessels in the lungs, literal damage in lungs. So I'm wondering if it's what is the process of burning that stuff and then inhaling in the lungs, popped up lungs with a toxic chemical and smoke. Because remember, our lungs were built by God to breathe fresh air in the Garden of Eden. You're taking that fresh air, you can hold it, and then you release waste. But what is it? I don't know if anybody have looked into this, that you take a big puff of poison and smoke and toxic chemicals to feed your brain. And then you hold it and you puff out how much damage can that do to an organ that was built to process clean, not dirty, and to release dirty? Think about that. Uh, I don't see that can be a good thing. The, you know, people are so dangerous, but it's, it looks so nice and innocent until they puff out. You're like, what is this? this thing like a, it's like a, you're watching a dragon instead of blowing um, smoke. It's like, I mean, blowing fire, the dragon's blowing smoke. It's misfiring. <laughs> so teens who use concentrate marijuana more likely to use other drugs so third article i want to share on this topic here about as we look at vaping problems and uh innocent deceptions this is written by linda Car carl nbc news 
Teens who use a teens who use a concentrated form of marijuana, sometimes called dabs, which I've watched videos on this, wax, shatter, or crumble, are more likely to also use other drugs than kids who avoid marijuana. A new study suggests marijuana concentrate can come in multiple forms including oils and body like compounds and can contain very high levels of thc the psychoactive compound in cannabis is often ingested using a vaping device and doesn't smell like traditional pot in the study published monday in the journal pediatrics researchers survey almost 50,000 adolescents in arizona the researchers found that among um, teens who use any form of cannabis, 72% had experience with the more potent products, which is fascinating. Those findings should serve as an alert of, uh, to parents who may not even know their kids are vaping, said the study leads author um, Mandeline Mayer. An assistant professor of psychology in Arizona State University, I don't know that parents know about this stuff. If I weren't a marijuana researcher, I don't know if I saw a vape with a marijuana that I would know what it was. Parents should educate themselves about these forms of cannabis like um, look like. I don't know what it looked like. To get a better sense um, of teen drug use, Mayor and her colleagues surveyed 47,142 students in 8, 10, and 12 grades from 245 schools ar across Arizona in 2018. The students were asked whether they have ever used marijuana or marijuana concentrate, as well as whether they had used either in the past month they were also asked about other drug use peer sub um, peer substance use and whether they thought cannabis was safe some questions on the survey were designed to reveal whether teens were rebellious engaged in risky behavior or um, doing poorly academically academically overall this research found that 33 percent of teens have tried some form of pot and 24% said they had used concentrate, concentrated forms. The likelihood of a student using cannabis rose with age. 20% of the A graders said they have used the drug compared to 35% of 10th graders and 46% of 12th graders. So if you're in 12th grade, you have a 1 in 2 chance that you're using, uh, if you're in Arizona at least. Similarly, 15% of the 8th graders and 25% of the 10th graders and 33% of the 12th graders said they have used cannabis concentrates. Concentrate users had the highest rates of having tried other drugs. Mayor is most concerned about the failure of kids who use these concentrate form of the future of kids who use a concentrated form of pot. Studies in adults have shown that concentrates may raise the risk of addiction, thinking and memory problems, and psychosis. The new studies come at a time when the use of e-cigarette and other vaporizers uh, in teens have grown explosively, noted Dr. Cheryl Ryan, a professor of the Department of Pediatrics and Chief of Adolescent Medicine. Uh, at Penn State, between 2011 and 2018, the rate of vaporizers, vaporizer, including e-cigarette used by high school students, increased from 1.5% to 20.8%. Ryan wrote in an editorial published alongside the new study, it, if it is those vaporizers and e-cigarette that allow teens and others to use the highly concentrated forms of cannabis while some might conclude that new studies may mean that cannabis use is leading to other drugs it's more likely that cannabis use is simply a marker for the teens who are more likely to be drawn to drugs and other risk says ryan vandry
An associate professor at the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Science at John Hospital University, use of concentrates might be a predictor of some of more intensive cannabis use and the propensity to try more dangerous drugs, he said. Findings are are very concerning, says Dr. Abigail uh, Schlesinger, chief of the behavioral science of the division of UPMC Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. Parents use parents need to know about the risk. Schlesinger said, "This is not your grandparents' cannabis. It's more concentrated, my grandparents, and there's a lot of reasons to believe that the adolescent years." It alters brain development. Schlesinger echoes Mayer's call for parents to have some serious talk with their teens. Parents need to be clear that they don't support cannabis use, she said, because if we don't give a clear message, then teens can take it as a tacit statement that it is okay. That doesn't mean that you say, they will be expelled from the family if they try something. Uh, but we need to tell them that if they do these things, they may not reach their full potential and get a beat down. No, they may not reach their full potential. So this is the, the sad reality of what's going on. The numbers there, I wanted to share this with you, is, is part of... Um, as my topic is vaping problems and innocent deceptions or life's innocent deception. Uh, now, part of it, when you read that, you might think, no, it's vaping. The topic should be vaping problems. And when you're young, you kind of be innocent and naive to deception. That's another way to title this thought. Uh, because if you see the numbers there and you see 20% of high school, but that 20% is really 40 something percent by the time a child is in the last year of high school and they're not basically rolling up some some paper or, or some leaf i should say and smoking that leaf they're taking the concentrate so the active ingredient which is basically a nerve vine which will damage the central nervous system retard the brain and um and and the brain development this is what um a large percentage of of you know, 46% of 12th graders are using at a time when their brain is still under development. They still probably have a little bit of growth left in them. And the brain is going to be developing over the next 7 to 10 years and maturing them to become adults and functioning adults. And it's a the time they're using drugs. And if the doctor, doctor from John Hoskin in the, in the article is right, that it could be an indicator that these kids are willing to try. Well, if you have one and two, that means... You know, there could be a plurality of kids willing to try even harder drugs. Like, hey, let's see what that does, you know. And and then you do it and like, okay, let's keep seeing what this does. So eight graders are using 20% one in five. So if you have an eight grader, then it's almost a one in five chance that they're using concentrates. Uh, and it's so easy. That's the thing about sin. It's so easy to just reach out and touch it and to do it because it's just right there. You just take a hit of that thing or bite it, and then that's it. And now you're taking in something. So this goes back again to the concentrate, because if the, the child is already 18 and uh, 17, sorry, and they're going to be one in chance, one in two chance of hitting concentrate. And as they say, this is not your grandparents' weed. This is some very highly concentrated as a matter of fact i was watching a video on um uh probably a few months back on uh, this thing here not just the concentrate that is burning the e-cigarette but this thing called dabs or wax shatter crumble that we're talking if i'm my, my memory serve me right we're talking about THC concentration in the 60s and 70s and 80%. I think that's what it is. It, it is basically like, to me at that point, you're using something similar to crack cocaine. It, it, I, I don't know how similar it is because, see, um, one is a is a depress, depressant and one is a stimulator. Depending on the drug, they're always one or the other. They get you going or they bring you down. 
the chill you out. So a young person to me using something that is a central nervous system, um, it pulls it down. Or somebody using it is a cocaine and it kicks it up. What's that? What makes that so dangerous is that you're developing. And to me, I don't know about you, but to me, it's, I guess some people need to chill because they're anxious. I need to mellow out. But for me, the idea of chilling is not a good idea. I guess I can chill without drugs. I don't know about you. Um, and so it, just this idea of taking something that is depressing your system and making you chill. Because for me, the, the aim is um, trying to chase down energy. I want to be energized. I want to be like that little bunny that um, being energized. And I want to use something like lithium iron. Uh, make, make it explosive. <laughs> So th this idea here, but then the problem, as the previous article was saying, the long-term effect. So then let's put two and two together, as they say. So you have a product that is a, a sedate, it can sedate the system, tranquilize it, and make you just go, ah, oh, chill. All right. All right. So you have that. And you pop that into the lungs at high concentration. Let's say these dabs. Remember this thing I was watching on this dab, these kids making it and using it. It, it is like a, a paste that they get. You know, it's almost like you can rub that marijuana. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's a flower or what? I don't know what it is. And you rub it and rub it until you can get that very concentrated form. And you burn it and you, you have like now very concentrated, high concentration. So now you have the high concentration. You hit the lungs. And this thing is supposed to sedate. And so I'm often wondering, is that's why I'm saying, it, could it be a combination? Could it just straight up be the THC itself? That when it hit that lungs, it just chills it too much. And it makes it can't expand and contract. It, it just sedates it. Just a wonder. It could be wrong. I know I never did it, so I don't know. But it made me wonder. So this is where, this is, like I said, this is these young people now are next up, Right? You know, like, if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, you're on the scene now to take over the world. You know, you're going to be, you already are in your supervisor management, um, leadership, business owner position. That's where you're at. In your 30s, 40s, 50s. And you're replacing now the baby boomers. Now, if you're in your 20s, early 30s, 20s, teens, these are going to be the ones that are going to be lining up for the next 10 to 15 to 20 years to take over. And imagine now, one in four, they're filling their brains and their nervous, central nervous system and their spinal column, and they're basically wreaking havoc on it. And many of them are not going to reach even in the 30s, 40s, 50s because they're going to peg out, they're going to kick the bucket before they get to that age because you see as i say these young men and young girls they're just popping off uh not living long they've they've they're dying at such high rates um that in that generation especially that they have caused a drop in the or increase in the mortality rate in america that now we in a population decline and primary because of young men, which is going to exacerbate the population problem in five or ten years. Why? Because if it's young men primarily dying, and they're dying so fast that they've affected the death rate, that these are the young men who are supposed to sire kids. Many of them sire not, nothing because either they're sterilized from all the drugs they're using or they wipe themselves out so they vanish. So there's no children they're siring. So this is going to affect the, the, the population rate even worse than we thought. I think they they need to get a grip of what's going on. I think it's worse. Because remember, you're wiping out all these young men. They ain't going to get nobody pregnant in or out of wedlock because they're dead. And many of them that are alive, they're sterilized. They've sterilized themselves. Because as you know, this marijuana here, our grandparents' marijuana, 3 to 5% THC, uh, was, was basically what caused erectile dysfunction. Uh, in about, I think, 40-something percent or so or more of men that use it. Imagine this type of stuff. This type of stuff has to be amazing how it destroys the central nervous system. 
So I don't know. They, it's just I think the problem is worse. So to to know what my main thought is, let's share with you my main thought. So you see this thing here now. So it is so innocent. This is what sin is. Sin is so innocent that and it's so it's so appealing. It's so you know uh, attractive in its seduction. This is what sin is. It's very seductive. You want to have a good time? Come over here and take the central nerve. Um, destroyer and stimulant at the same time i'm going to make you really experience what it is like to partake of the tree of of the knowledge of good and evil you partake of it and boom you get you get to like oh you feel that that's powerful right you get this massive good feeling and it destroys you at the same time this is that's to me is what drug is this, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil a perfect fit so again if you read notice here the environment that was in the church in Isaiah 28, verse 7 and 8. I'm going to read verse 7 and 8 primarily. It says, But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They erred in vision and they stumble in judgment. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness. So that there is no place clean. So you've seen a person on the side of the street, and they basically their bodies ravage with the result of drugs and alcohol, and or alcohol. Their minds are gone, and all they're living for is just more drugs. They're not gonna help head up a family. They're not gonna try to lead children or guide them. They are just there to try to get anything they can so they can feed that habit. They're not going to try to own any property. They're not going to do anything. Uh, what's because of the drugs? And imagine some of these people were even once pastors, ministers of the gospel. But they erred. They stumbled. They vomited. It's unclean. It's filthiness because of drugs and alcohol. This is what happened. And we have now a large, if we had to think we have a problem, then from what I'm getting from these numbers from high schoolers, we have a larger problem of drug users coming up on our scene. It's going to be amazing to see if we live, if God continue to give us life to see all this to, uh, transpire. It's like, again, we are already living in a zombie apocalypse, but we ain't seen nothing yet, I believe. I believe what's coming is going to be da so dangerous because so much of the young men, that's all they do. Just get up every day and just light themselves up. In Genesis 3, verse 5 through 7. Genesis 3, verse 5 through 7. So this is what we're talking about. Life's innocent deception. It seems so cute. Look at a person puffing all that stuff. Wow. Notice in Genesis 3, verse 5 through 7. Notice what the devil said here. For God not know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And you shall be as gods. Be as gods. Not Godzilla, but gods. Knowing good and evil. Imagine. Pew, that blow our mind. God keeping something away from you. God made you, but God didn't tell you something. That you hit that weed, you'll be as gods. You're going to know good and evil. Well, you know, this is a trick with what he just said. Because... The the devil is repeating something in a twisted way that God said. He said, don't eat of this tree. Because if you eat of this tree, you're going to know good and evil. You see that? Don't eat of it. Because if you eat of it, you're going to know good and evil. Now, we live in now. We see evil. We see, if I say to somebody, why is a mocker and strong drinker is raging? And like, in his mind, he has an image of a hip club with the nice bartender, young people dancing, people drinking, and it's a good time. You don't see the wine on the side of the street. It's not the image in your mind, because that's not the image the devil wants you to see. But that's the evil part. The good part is, oh, look at it. We are young and we hot. and We dancing, baby. And you go and say, you see that guy on the side of the street begging, and you didn't know that how many years ago he was inside of that club, and he was hot, and he was young, and he was like, yeah, baby, we, we're doing good. We're living a good life. 
but that that's that's your end that's where you're going you end you're gonna end up right there so that's how the devil he, he tells you it he said yeah you're gonna, you're gonna know it good and evil and you'd be like what is evil well you know, give me that thing because i want to be like I, I don't hear that other part i just hear the part you're gonna be like god's and you're gonna you'll be just like god because god got no good and evil the difference with god is god is not tempted by evil nor doesn't god does not partake in evil he just knows it he knows the end from the beginning he know the end result you can see the result of the thing, but not partake of it. You know, but you don't know personally. See, we know evil personally. When you're in pain, you'll be like, man, I know evil. I know it. I experience it. When somebody rip you off, lie on you, whatever, you'll be like, yeah, I know it. I know what it is like. It's not good. Evil's like, yeah, give me that thing. It's all good. And this is where the deception for the young people that be like, yeah, give me that thing. This thing is good. And they hit it. And they be like, oh man, this is great. But trouble is coming. There is partake of an insidious poison. Notice in verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And that it was pleasant to the eye. You know, when you see people on drugs, they be like, man, they in love with drugs. Ain't nothing sweeter than some weed. A tree to be desired to make one wise. That's why Rastaman always say they're conscious, they're wise. And because they say, yeah, this thing opened your thinking. She took off the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it also to her husband with her and he did eat. You know, they said, they say, you patch, pass the kochi on the left hand side because it's need to burn or something like that. Gotta, we gotta pass it on, you know, next. I don't know if you pass it on the left hand side, what is that? Um, Clockwise, <laughs> I guess. You're passing it clockwise, right? And that's what it is. It's like, because that's what, it's fascinating when somebody partake, they'll be like, man, you need to try this. And the other person like, really? Yeah, it's good. You need to try it. And you try it, and then you're like, man, this is good. This. Because notice again, I read again, that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree desire to make one wise. You be wise. Think about it. The, the, even as you move through the Bible, you realize that one of the best things you can get is wisdom. Even God says, Christ says, it's him. When you receive wisdom, you receive in Jesus. And they wanted wisdom. They were made. You and I were made to be wise. We're not made to just have knowledge and understanding. That's obvious. We have a brain that just keeps sucking information in. But we're made to be wise. We're not made to be fools. We're not even we we we're not even attracted to fools. Fools is irritating. But not the way they did it. They were cheating. They wanted to not have to be conscious and observe the world and do what we do here from day to day. And trying to peer into this world and into its spirituality and morality and knowledge and in, and you know all the different interests to be wise. They were trying to cheat the system. Just smoke some weed, you'll be wise. How are you on earth somebody's going to smoke some weed and be wise? I still can't get it. And I've been around that stuff for years. I guess from being young and I, I can't get it. But you, when you're in that mindset, you tend to believe that you can smoke weed and be wise. And take cocaine and it will open. Think about LSD. LSD will open up to portals where you'll see visions and have experiences that is mind-blowing. Push! But it's evil. And that's what makes life so dangerous. So notice here, she passed the weed on to her husband. I know, it's not weed. The fruit. Same concept. You partake, you want other people to partake. And the eyes of them both were opened. And they knew that they were naked. Like, oh, oh something has gone different here. And they sung figs leaf together. And made themselves aprons. So they have to start covering the mess because it's all a mess so that's how the devil comes to us and that's how the devil tricks us with these kind of insidious ploys that eh, it seemed good but it's not good it's going to destroy you and as i say i don't know if it's a level of puff that come out of that thing that vaping machine or it is the um the thc and the tobacco that are insidious poisons these are poisons as a matter of fact, there's another article. So much article on this thing is unbelievable. There's another article that says that even with THC, that it's kind of mask when they make brownies because the caffeine, I'm hopefully I'm saying it wrong, 
right? I think it's theobromide in the caf in the chocolate mask uh, some of the effects of uh, of the potency of the of the THC. So keep that in mind. So the, we're talking about mild and then more strong. So heavy dose of THC, mild dose of caffeine, teobromide, all that type of stuff. And you start mixing all that mild drugs with that heavy drugs, and you can get a very interesting result. Here, real quickly, for the sake of time, I'll read Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 11, I think it is. And it's talking about you know, Christ being led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil in verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he afterward was an hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of Man, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, which is Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, you know, this is important for you and I. Why this is important? Because notice, there might be and often is a need for the substance. And that's where the problem comes in. When it's where the rubber meets the road. For some reason, whether it be people are bored, whether it be people are looking for fun, whether it be people are literally having a mental problem, they're depressed, uh, they're lonely, uh, they're in pain. This is what causes a lot of the opiate problems. There is a need. And in this need for real solutions, uh, the drugs become a solution but the problem is with that comes some problems so the here Christ was in need and the temptation was to satisfy that need and the devil came to him with that trickery but the trickery wasn't based upon nothing it was based upon the real need so you think about that you see somebody on pain in pain and they say they need something to take away the pain and they try morphine or they try um all these, you know, Tylenol and all that stuff, and it does nothing. It's like the pain said, what that? What's that? And then the doctor said, I'm going to hit you with something. And they hit you with, say, opiates, and the pain said, okay, I think I got I got pushback here. And they said, well, we're going to hit you with something like Dilaudin or something like that. And the pain said, oh, yeah, that's it. But then the person started to say, oh, that's a good feeling. I like that. But it was a real need. You see, when Christ was upon the cross, this is a good example again. Christ was given what they call a rush, I think in the original language, which they say is a mixture of vinegar and opium, poppy, which would be an opiate. So Christ was offered opiate on the cross. And if you think about it, if anybody, because I was even thinking about this last night, I'm thinking, man, you know, you've, I, you, I'm sure you've suffered some pain in your life that is like, it's gut wrenching. There, you even want to vomit. The pain is so severe, and to be in the type of pain that Christ was in, and say, "No, bro, I'm no." He said, "No, bro." He says, "No." He didn't take the the, the opiate. Are you be thinking because that would be a way to extract it, the the vinegar or the the wine, to extract it out, and to kind of deaden the pain. Most people be like, "Take it," but if you take it, your mind is gonna be. Or the, or the whack. Or you might sin. And this is what's happening. So this is how insidious it is. It's like the temptation is coming to you. And it is real. You really have a need. You know when devil tricked Adam and Eve. It wasn't without. Hey look I trick Eve at least. It was with. Hey look. There's, didn't God tell you all these things? I'm saying to you what God says. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying to you what God says. But it's a twist. And that's the trick. The twist is the trick. And that's what's so dangerous about this world. The, you know, when the next thing he took, he took Christ up on a pinnacle. And he said, if you bow down, well, people are supposed to bow down. You are here to be the most famous person that ever walked the face of the planet. The most powerful person ever walked the face of the planet. You know that's what you're here for. And Satan didn't say, do it the easy way. You see, the Satan trick is not based upon nothing. It's based upon something. You know, this is some of the most dangerous deceptions or deceptions that are based upon some truth. It's a mixture of truth and error. So it's hard to deal because you say, how do you say no to something that is a mixture? Like, you don't, don't the Bible says this? And you're like, yeah, the Bible says this, but not in that way. 
you're twisting it. And that's the trick of the devil. So we as spiritual people have to be careful. It, our needs, our wants can be manipulated and can be used against us and can trick us into a need. You, you know, somebody might be genuinely depressed. And that's a dep 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 definite need. But that need is going to be used to you undoing. Got to be careful of this is how the devil works. We're going to talk more about that in another time. Let's pray. Our Father, words in heaven, I thank you for your word. I thank you, dear Lord, for how you unmask the subtlety of the evil one. I pray that you may be with us, dear Lord, that we might overcome and that we might have our eyes wide open by some eyes self. May you bless us, we pray, as we walk humbly before thee. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you live again tomorrow morning where we should talk about current events. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm -hmm.